I like to add texture to some of my gifts just to add a little bit of visual interest and give it a little bit of depth. So what I'm actually gonna do is I took some photos of my sidewalk outside of my apartment earlier today and um, I'm just gonna use that as a texture. It kind of has this like nice grit to it. Um, it's gonna add a little bit of depth, a little bit of something to my animation. So you can kind of do whatever works for you, but I just snapped a photo on my phone and I'm gonna go ahead and airdrop it to myself on my desktop. So now that I've airdropped this texture to myself, it's on my desktop. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that in my popsicle folder. Awesome. And I'm gonna open it. And so this is looking pretty interesting, um, but I'm just gonna wanna go ahead and make some adjustments to this to make it more of a texture. So I'm gonna open it in Photoshop. So now what I'm gonna do to this is I'm going to make it black and white. That's looking okay to me. If you want to, you can go ahead and adjust some of these things too. And when you do, you might see a little bit of detail come out that wasn't there before. And that might just add a little bit of visual interest as well. Okay, that's looking good to me. So I'm just gonna go back to the adjustments panel. So we're gonna go into the curves part of this and that's just gonna add a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna go ahead and press right here and sort of drag this down. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, then this might be second nature to you already. Okay, that's looking good and that's looking contrasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as texture and press OK. So now that I've finished my texture, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that into After Effects. Okay, so our setting is now on composition retain layer sizes from when we imported the popsicle, but I'm just gonna wanna set it to footage because I only need one layer and that's the texture layer. Okay, so we have this nice texture in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this down a little bit and play with it to figure out the right position. So I'm gonna press S for scale on the texture layer. I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit and I might just uh, move it around a little bit and kind of like find a good place for this. I kind of like this little dark gradient on the bottom here so I might just place it right there. Okay, so now we wanna make sure that this texture is really subtle. Right now it's super harsh. So I'm just gonna press T for opacity. I'm just gonna bring this down to something really low. Let me try it on 20%, okay? So another thing that you can do to this texture to try to blend it in is you can play with the blending modes, which are right on this sidebar in After Effects under Mode. So there's a lot of options here, but I normally just stick to Soft Light or Overlay. So if you wanna take this texture to the next level and add even more motion to it, what you can do is you can animate the texture. So I'm just gonna press P for position on my keyboard, and I'm gonna add a position keyframe. I'm also gonna press S on my keyboard for scale, and I'm even gonna press R on my keyboard for rotation. So that's a lot of keyframes. We're gonna press U to view all of them. So now we're gonna jump a few frames ahead in time. Doesn't really matter how many, because we can adjust it later. And I'm just gonna move this texture and make it look a little bit different. So I might scale it up. I might rotate it a little bit, just so it looks a little bit different from the previous keyframe. So now this is really important. If I just play it out like this, there's like too much going on there. It almost looks like a mistake or like some noise. So you just want it to jump from texture placement to texture placement. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna set these as hold keyframes. I'm gonna select my keyframes. I'm gonna right click. 
I'm going to press keyframe interpolation. Right now they're set to linear. We want to set them to hold so we can hold the placement of each position. I'm going to press OK. So you're going to see a difference in this and that in between these keyframes, there's no motion happening. As you can see, it kind of jumps from position to position. And um, whereas before, when it was linear, it kind of had um, motion going in between these two areas. So what a hold keyframe really does is it just jumps between each position instead of giving you that smooth motion in between the keyframes. So now that I have these two, I think that's good. If you wanted to, you could go in and adjust it a couple different times, um, keep rotating it, keep scaling it, playing with that. And After Effects will recognize that you used hold keyframes in the past, so it will make sure to make these hold keyframes as well. So we have three different positions going on here. I'm just going to drag these to the beginning. I'm going to play this out. Okay, so I got three here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just duplicate these just like we did with the compositions earlier. So I'm going to press Command C and Command V to paste it. So I'm going to paste it again here and again here. And I'm just going to keep pasting these keyframes until I reach the very end. And I'll delete these two because they're hanging off. Okay, so let's just play this through. All right. So that just adds a little bit of movement to your texture. So I still think this movement is a little bit too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to click and drag these last keyframes. So what that's going to do is that is going to make sure that my keyframes are still evenly distributed, but it's going to allow the movement to go a little bit slower. And it's going to reduce the amount of keyframes that we have in our work area. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these extra keyframes. And I'm going to play it now. All right, so that's a lot more subtle to me. The texture's moving a lot slower. And I think that's really good because it doesn't distract from the motion of the drips or the clouds, which I really want to be the key motion areas. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.